All right, guys. So we see right there that it looks like it's only got about 60 pounds of compression. Pretty close for us. To time to take it outside and put the pressure washer to it. So uh, buy the uh, base and the jug. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna get this get this piston off and. What's up everybody Jason here with Cart Smart TV and I had a customer drop me off a pretty cool old model easy go that has the two cycle in it and so <clears throat> they dropped it off told me it hadn't been running in about three years and they just hadn't had time to do anything with it so I uh, dropped it off yesterday to me and I have already checked some of the you know basic stuff like making sure we had good fire on the spark plug and we did uh, making sure we were getting good fuel flow from the fuel pump we do and uh, so now my next goal is to see what we got in compression so that's what we're gonna do now guys let's give this thing a hit and see what happens not good let's do it one more time here all right guys so we see right there that it looks like it's only got about 60 pounds of compression and uh, I have also noticed that it might be a little hard to see because it's so dark but you can see the wet behind the clutch right there uh, looks like it's blown the base gasket out as well. And, uh, All right, guys. So we got clearance from our customer to go ahead and do a rebuild, and uh, he's going to do the full-on rebuild with all the new seals, jug, piston, rings, base gasket, exhaust gaskets, intake manifold gasket, all that good stuff for the two-cycle. And um, I like to start out by getting my exhaust pipe out of the way, which is probably the most obvious thing. And then I'll move to getting the air intake tube out the way, probably the the whole the whole assembly here. I'll get it out of my way, and then at that point I will have only just a few bolts left to uh, take out of the engine and slide it out. Of course, getting the starter generator belt out the way and all that good stuff goes with that too. So that's what I'm gonna start doing now, guys. Get this thing out, and uh, once I get it out, you'll. Uh, You'll get to see me get it on the bench and uh, tear it apart. There you guys, there we go. Got it out, sitting on the bench. And uh, it's time to start getting it tore apart. And get this thing cleaned up good and put the new parts on it. And All right guys, so we're going into full-blown teardown mode now. fan shreds they're made out of aluminum and so they already have these dials in them and you just match it up to the side of the block can't go wrong there guys so I just pulled the fan off here and you can see you have your uh, pulsar coil mounting ring which is basically like the the way you time this up um, pretty close for us time to take it outside and put the pressure washer to it so uh, stay tuned guys we're gonna take it out and get it cleaned up and bring it back in and uh, start finish tearing it apart get the whole jug and everything off of it and um, go from there sprayed off it's time to get the cylinder head off get the 
jug out the piston off and uh, start going back with the new stuff and then we'll get all the other components that go back on it clean back up pretty typical of what a two cycle would look like got some build up here get that cleaned off later Okay, gasket looks pretty good and no leaks. Okay guys, before we pull this jug off, I want to make sure that you guys know that these two cycle engines have windows in them on the jug and on the piston and so you need to be mindful hopefully you can see those two windows right there so this is your intake side if your fuel is going in this direction these windows on this piston need to be facing the right orientation with the new stuff when you go on with it because if you get it backwards you will have to take it back out pull it all back apart spin the piston around put it all back together a lot of time-consuming work so just grab you a couple of pictures before you uh, pull the jug off <clears throat> and then also on the exhaust side you'll be able to see the piston comes up then goes down it lets the exhaust out goes up the windows in the fuel side come down take in the fuel push it through pop and out the exhaust it goes so just keep in mind that those windows need to be facing the intake side your reed valve side we're gonna get this jug off here now guys and just like that all right and so that you guys can see what the real major problem was is you can see the base gasket has been split in half you can see right here where it was actually leaking by the uh, base and the jug and while i was getting this piston off guys i did a little investigating and i kind of put my hand up there to hold it still and noticed that I had the upper the top ring on the piston just broke clean in half so that's a definitely a whole nother problem it's a good thing that this uh, this gentleman wants to go the way he wants to go with just redoing the whole thing so it's gonna be like brand new again there you go. got the piston off now you have your wrist pin bearing assembly I like to clean this off blow it out good and then I'm going to soak this for however long it takes me to get the rest of this cleaned up. Uh, probably, you know, probably overnight, most likely. Um, but I'm going to soak this in just regular 30 weight motor oil. That way, when I go to put the new piston in, this will already be ready to go to slide back in the wrist and the, the rod itself. And you don't have to worry about you know making sure it's already lubricated before you go in it's it, you've already excuse me already got it done spray paint can lid and i just filled it up with some uh, motor oil gonna let that soak while we get the rest of it done so now we're gonna i'm gonna move to the reed valve assembly here um you want to make sure you want to hold this thing up to some light or or put a flashlight behind it and be looking through to see if you see any light coming through anywhere uh, because you want these to be completely sealed off and this one seems to be in good shape I don't see any any light coming through but if you do have light coming through what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these two screws out of this side out and take this thing and flip it over you're gonna take the reed the reeds themselves not this piece you're gonna take these reeds flip them over and put it back together and you're gonna do that on both sides um, this one I'm just gonna clean up real good and, and uh, have it ready to go back in uh, but most of the time that fixes the 
issues that that could come with having bad reed valves and so this is where we at now with the engine block itself and uh, as I said before <clears throat> some of these rings you can leave on here and just remove the pulser coil well, once I removed my pulser coil this block here is a little bit too big to get the uh, seal out of the way so this particular model I had to move the ring and everything some of them they only have like a little uh, piece here with the two screw holes and you can get by without having to remove the ring but in my case I am an unlucky character here so uh, my goal here is to get this ski get the uh, crankshaft seal right here out on both sides and let's get some new ones in it while we are right here and uh, so yeah I'm gonna get that done and I'll be back so you see there it only took me just a couple of seconds to get them both out and uh, yeah they uh, just tap your I have a seal puller here I'll just lay it sideways tap it in there and just pull and it'll let go and then you'll have your surfaces there that can be cleaned up and the new seals put back on all right so there's the flywheel side seal crankshaft seal put back in nice and flush um, when you're putting these in be sure you are going to lubricate the seal um, you can use regular motor oil or two cycle oil whichever you have available it's going to be fine all you're doing is just trying to get it to be easy to slip up on the shaft here and it doesn't damage the actual rubber seal part and then there's the other side put back in and uh, now I'm going to focus on putting my timing wheel back in here and getting that all back together like it's supposed to be. <clears throat> and then we'll move on from there. Alright guys, so here's the windows I were telling you about. And uh, this is the new standard piston that's going to go back in this engine. And so if you're not familiar with the two cycles, the two cycle pistons have these tiny little pins inside of them okay so what you're gonna do is you're gonna match the ring gap to this pin so that way when it collapses it just great it just barely touches that pin and then once you get the piston in the in the jug it'll release off of it just enough to do the seal so really in essence what's happening here is it's already doing your uh, orientation of your rings because the other pin is on the other side and so one orientation is here and one orientation is going to be here that way they're already separated you don't have to worry about making sure that it's you know the ring gap is is uh, facing away from each other of course so that's what we're going to do now we're going to get the rings put on it and as always guys the rings have this tiny little letter right there hopefully you can see that uh, but that's going to face up on the piston. So it's going to go face up. Alright, so as I stated, you want to make sure you get your end gap here and align with the little pin that's in the piston. So that way when you go to squeeze it and slip it up in the head, it's right where it needs to be without you having to fight with it at all. And so the next thing that you're going to need to do when putting this back together is you're going to get one of your retainer wrist pin retainer clips and go ahead and put it into one side or the other of the piston hopefully you can see that but just like so i got the clip sitting in there and what that's going to do is going to help you it's going to help take away a step when you go to put this piston back on the rod there because you're going to put the piston on the rod before you put the jug on it and you're going to need an extra set of hands when you're putting the jug back on this thing. Uh, so that way one of you can work the piston and then the other one can work the jug as you simultaneously get it to slide down. Actually, I said that wrong. Um, I haven't done a two cycle in a while, so forgive me guys. But what you're actually going to do is you're going to lubricate your, your rings with oil. And then you're going to take your piston and slide it into your jug first. That way you can take the whole thing and sit it down, slide the wrist pin in, 
put your clip on, and then boom. And, and it'll shove the piston up into the jug. All right, everybody, this is what I was saying when you, when I mean you put the piston into the jug first. That way your rings are already collapsed, and this is where you're going to need the second set of hands because you're going to need somebody to be able to push the wrist pin through while somebody's holding the jug up to be able to put your uh, wrist pin and your clip, retainer clip there in. So uh, that's what we're going to get done now. All right, guys, there's the new jug sitting on top. New piston in. And as I said before, there's our windows for the fuel to go in and out of. Well, just to go in. And uh, now we're going to get our base nuts put on here and get them tightened down. And then uh, continue on. So stick with me. Alright guys, there it is, all finished up, cleaned up as good as I could get it, just pretty caked up with that grime from the two cycle oil leaking everywhere, the old gas tank had a leak in it, I had one that was out in my junkyard that was still good, got it all cleaned up and put in, pretty simple to do, just undo your strap here, and your bolts there, a little bit of finagling to get it to up and out, come right out now it's time to go back in with the engine so stay all right guys so we just fired it up off camera um there's a reason behind that as well but it is running great fired right up got back into the shop from taking her for a ride it done wonderful um have let it set here in the shop floor just to make sure that we don't have any leakage going on like a fuel leak somewhere i mean it you know little stupid things could show up at any time uh, but looking good driving good sounding good there's a little bit of a rattling going on but i know what that is get the seat off here i know what that is that's the this little pan here uh, you can see right in here there's uh, the pan that the muffler sits on and, and straps down to well, this side over here has got a little bit of play in it, causing it to rattle. And uh, I'm going to get that tightened up <clears throat> a little bit better. Put a few more washers on the bottom of it. I think the, the bolt's just a little too long for this side, which is was there when I took it apart. But I'm going to adjust that and um, give it one last ride. And should be all good to go, guys. So that's going to be a wrap for this golf cart. We appreciate you watching these videos, guys. Don't forget to comment. Hit that like button. Hit that bell for the notifications for the new videos coming out. And as always, subscribe to the channel, guys. Help us get all this info out there. Thanks to everybody that has subscribed. And uh, enjoy your spring, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.